Um, Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting is an organization um, that has been around for, oh my God, uh, since 1989, 1990, at some point back then, I think. And uh, I remember when they were first put together, when this organization was first established, by a, a, a couple of young journalists who were just tired of seeing bullshit in media. And they've been around ever since. And, and what they do is try to provide fairness and accuracy in reporting, uh, primarily in the print medium. But they also sometimes expose the bullshit of uh, electronic medium. And they just recently, uh, I think Monday... I think Monday came out with a little thing, the top 16 euphemisms that headline writers for television and newspapers have used in this country for police beating the shit out of people, the euphemisms. And let me, let me share these with you. With you. Um, here's one from NBC. Urgent new calls for police reform amid use of force. Use of force. Another one from NBC. Aggressive tactics in Minneapolis. Aggressive tactics. What NBC described as aggressive tactics, this is from May 31st, included firing paintball rounds at residents as they stood on their porches. Huh? From the Detroit Free Press, May 31st, quote, after curfew, Detroit police act aggressively to disperse protesters who refuse to leave. Act aggressively to disperse. From NBC News, same day, May 31st. Minneapolis officers use more aggressive tactics against protesters as rallies flare around the U.S. More aggressive tactics. You notice the the word that's missing so far, and I don't think you're going to hear it from me as I go through these headlines. What's missing is the word Police, or the two words, police violence. Do you remember 1968, the Democratic Convention in Chicago? Okay, you don't because you're too damn young. I remember it. I remember it very clearly. What was described in Mayor Richard Daley's uh, Chicago as a police riot. I saw images that night I will never forget. If, if you want to see a good depiction of it, get the movie medium cool which is about a freelance television journalist covering the 68 convention and the cinematographer in that uh, film medium cool is haskell wexler if you are a cinemaphile you know the name haskell wexler the cinematographer and he used in in cuts that you cannot tell the difference between actual footage and the movie cuts of the police riot in Chicago, especially in Grant Park during the Democratic National Convention in 1968. So if you want to see what Chicago was like in 1968, granted, it's a film. It is not a documentary, but you'll see what is meant by police riots. But I digress. June 1st, from CNN, quote, an agitated Trump encourages governors to use aggressive tactics on protesters. Trump was suggesting violence. Why don't they say that? From, um, let me see, where's this one from? Washington Post, May 31st. Police turn more aggressive against protesters and bystanders alike, adding to disorder. Police turn more aggressive. 
No. Police turned fucking out of control violent. New York Times, June 4th. After curfew, protesters are again met with strong police response in New York City. Strong police response. Beating the fuck out of people with batons. Shooting at them with tear gas canisters. Strong police response. June 2nd. From ABC News, six Atlanta police officers charged in forceful arrests of college students in car. Forceful arrests? Did you see that video? Beating on these kids, pulling on them, yanking them? Forceful? From NPR, June 2nd. Despite curfews and heavy police presence, protests persist across the country. Heavy police presence? But they were standing around like statuary? From the Washington Business Journal, June 2nd. Low-flying helicopters, heavy police presence used to disperse protesters after D.C. goes under curfew. Low-flying helicopters using tactics that are used in combat zones against enemy troops? Low-flying? That's how they're described? And heavy police presence? Again, they're just all standing there, right? CNN, June 1st. While tensions between police and protesters boiled over in some cities, other officers joined the movement. Tensions? Tensions between, poli between police and protesters? Tension is what can develop between you and your teenager. It gets tense until one of you, usually you, you're the parent, Realize you're dealing with a teenager and back off. Tension? From WDJT, I believe this is Detroit, from June 4th. Rush the crowd. Protesters clash with officers at end of peaceful rally. Rush the crowd. Well, they're not talking about the protesters rushing a crowd of police, are they? Rush the crowd. Protesters clash. No, protesters didn't clash. The police clashed. The New York Times, May 30th. Fiery clashes erupt between police and protesters over George Floyd death. Fiery clashes erupt between police and protesters. Um, because the protesters were peacefully demonstrating? WBTS, June 2nd. Clash between police and protesters in Brockton brings out fireworks and tear gas brings out fireworks and tear gas. Notice the passive language in so many of these. Brings out. So the protesters were throwing fireworks, were they? And who was throwing the tear gas? New York Times, June 4th. De Blasio, the mayor, denounced after police forcefully clash with protesters. There it is again forcefully clash. Clash, that's the name of a punk rock group. What do you mean forcefully clash? You mean beat the shit out of people. Associated Press, June 5th. Mayor downplays rough police treatment of New York City protesters. Rough? Tear gas? Rubber bullets? Rough? 
from KIRO on the West Coast, June 3rd. Floyd protests suppressed in New York City as police enforce curfew. Enforce curfew. Like, you, hey, you boys and girls, you got to go home now. Street lights are on. Curfew. Come on, come on, go home. Give me a fucking break here. And from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, Which, if I remember, I hope I got the right paper here about what I'm about to say. I believe that the owner of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette was one of the people that was trying to fund the uh, 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 the uh, investigators who were trying to dig up all kinds of shit on Bill Clinton when he got caught with his uh, pecker in his zipper with Monica Lewinsky. I believe it's the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Their headline from May 30th, Retreat or deploy, nation's police try to balance protest response. Balance. Thanks to fairness and accuracy in reporting. Fair. For these, just a few headlines that, that demonstrate the euphemisms that are used when a fascist takeover is occurring in the United States and the state instruments of that fascist takeover, so-called law enforcement, is being used against people who do not want to see a fascist takeover, who want to see what the Constitution has promised us for two and a half centuries. Nature Seekers, while we're practicing safe social distancing, it's a great time to treat yourself with some seriously delicious, responsibly sourced coffee. Awaken to pleasure with River Moon Coffee. But don't take my word for it. Here are two recent reviews. Quote, we sell River Moon Coffee at Marine General Store and I can't seem to keep up with customer demand. Not only is the coffee excellent, but the philosophy behind it, the careful sourcing and constant research to bring a quality product to customers appeals to the hearts of our community, end quote. And here's one from a fellow Malloy listener, quote, I love, love, love this coffee. I buy it in five pound bags. I especially love the Truth Seeker blend, end quote. Sounds like they're planning ahead for the apocalypse. Anyway, support a progressive small business that supports this program. Go to MikeMalloy.com and click on the River Moon Coffee link on the main page. You'll thank me later.